What's up guys, Luis here from Alibi Security, and today I'm gonna to cover an alternative way to connect your Vigilant IP cameras to a Vigilant NVR. We all know that you can connect your cameras using the plug and play method and also through a LAN, but this way is using a Vigilant IP camera connected to a switch and plugging that switch directly into one of the camera ports. Why, why would you wanna do that? Well, sometimes it's good to do that when you don't want to make home runs all the way from one side of a building to another. You can literally plug all the cameras into a switch and then connect that one single cable all the way across the building into port number one, let's say, on the NVR. Before I get started, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you can get notified when new videos are available. Let's get started. So when you're setting up a situation like this, there's definitely an order of operations that you need to follow. So what I recommend is that you have everything separated. I would not connect anything to the NVR just yet. First step is we need to connect the cameras to the switch. The second step is we will configure the NVR. Third step is we'll connect the switch to the NVR. And the last step is we'll add those cameras in the uh, camera menu to the NVR. Sounds like a lot, but it really is just a really quick process. I couldn't believe how quick it was when I initially was trying to do this. So. The first thing you want to do is connect those cameras to the PoE switch. And keep in mind, do not connect that switch to anything else just yet. So now that the cameras are plugged in, we want to log into the NVR so we can configure the port that we want to connect the switch to. So that's what we're going to do right now. So as you can see here, I do have the kind of interface of the NVR set up. So I'm going to right click on here, go to menu. And right now, all these channels are looking for a plug and play situation. We want to change one of those channels to IP address, which means, hey, on this channel, we don't want it to do the plug and play protocol. So what I'll do here in this, in, in my test scenario, I'm going to use channel one. But in your scenario, you can use any of these 16 channels. Any of these plug and play channels can be changed. So if it's say if you wanted to plug your switch into port 16, then you will go down here to port 16 and make those adjustments that I'm about to do. In this demo, I'm going to use port one. So what I'm going to do here is select port one and I'm going to hit the cam config option. Under add mode, this is where it says plug and play. Right now it's looking for an individual camera on an individual cable. So we want to change that to IP address. You don't have to mess with any of any of the rest of the um, information there. We'll just hit OK. So now this channel is set to IP address. What that means is that it's not going to automatically try to use that plug and play protocol to add all these. Yeah, I have three cameras over here. It's not going to try to add all three of them at the same time. So that's all the configuration we need to do to the NVR. Now we can connect the switch to the NVR and I'm going to connect the switch. Uh, really you can plug into any port on the switch and then on the NVR, I'm going to make sure to plug into channel one because that's the, that's the channel that I modified. And we'll give that a second, right? So we want it to communicate with the cameras. So just to let you know that the DVR will still DHCP those cameras, but it's gonna start at a range from 100 all the way up. So right now, if you look at the screen of the DVR, the internal NIC address of this NVR is 172.16.0.1, which is the gateway. What that means is that when it assigns addresses to these cameras, it's gonna do the 172.16.0.2.3, as you can see here on the NVR. Dot two, dot three, dot four, dot five, and that is preset, right? That is the DHCP kind of protocol that it's using to address those cameras. Initially with plug and play, it starts at two all the way down to 16, but when you disable the plug and play on channel one and you connect a group of cameras via a switch, it will start at 100, 101, 102. So now just because we plugged in the switch into channel one does not mean we cannot utilize that channel. We can still use it as a channel on the NVR. So what we need to do on the NVR once the cameras are connected is the last step, which is add those cameras to these channels. So I will select camera one and I'll hit the cam config option. Down here on the bottom, if I hit the search button, it will search through that channel onto the switch and find those three cameras that are on the switch. And as you notice, they are all now 0.100, 0 0.101, 0 0.102. It's exactly what we want to see. So, hey, I'm going to select this first camera. And when I do select that camera, it adds all the information needed in uh, below. So I don't even have to change any parameters. The password is still default because this is a brand new camera. So the password is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. And as you can see, the IP address did change there on channel one. 
hey, let's just keep it moving. So I'm going to select camera two, hit the cam config option. It's already got my search list up. So I'm going to select 101 here, the second camera. I'm just going to hit OK. And for the last, the third camera here, I'm going to hit the cam config option. I'm going to hit 102. And as you notice, it does switch it to IP address. It puts the uh, address of the camera in and it does have the username and password and all that good stuff already for you. So I'm going to hit OK there. And once those are saved, as you can see, camera one did pop up already. Waiting for camera two to pop up and then camera three, we can hit the refresh button here. There's camera two. And let's refresh it again. Camera three should pop up. And the model name came up. And there is camera three. So now we have those three cameras online. So if I go to the main view, you can see here um, inside the video studio that these cameras are, they're shooting straight up at the ceiling, but you can see that they are online and they are working properly. That's how easy it is. Like literally, let's just in this case, let's say if you had 20 cameras connected to a switch, um, or let's say you had all 16. In this instance, if you had all 16 cameras connected to a switch, you just, step one, connect all the cameras to the switch. Step two, configure the port on the NVR that you wanna connect the switch to. So either it's port one, two, whatever, all the way through 16, you figure it out. Once that port is configured to IP address, you want to go ahead and connect the switch to the NVR on that port. After that, you just go into the camera menu, right? Just like I'm doing here, hit the cam config option. It shows this status with these green check marks here because these are already added to the DVR. But if there was anything left to add to the Vigilant NVR, you can select those cameras, hit OK. The coolest thing about this is that it kind of reduces the amount of actual typing you have to do on the NVR. You don't have to type the address of every camera. You don't have to type the password for every camera. Talking about making it simple, that is a super easy process. I mean, even like I said, in my testing phase here, um, when this was brought up, they were like, hey, you know, let's, let's try to kind of create this scenario where we add cameras to the PoE, do a PoE switch into one of the camera ports. Um, typically in our older systems, it was kind of a headache to figure all that out. With this, I was really surprised how simple it was, how quick it was, how easy it is to do this. Just keep in mind that all this, all the equipment that I have here today is directly out of the box. So if you do have um, cameras that are on different passwords or on different addresses, obviously there's gonna be more steps involved here. But uh, for the most part, if this is all brand new equipment, this is how simple it is. I mean, we're talking about just to add these three cameras and with me talking over this whole situation was probably like five minutes. It'll make it a lot easier for you to do an install. You can connect all your cameras locally there on that side of the building run the single run all the way to the MVR into the port and you will be able to add those cameras and you can even daisy chain in this situation right so if you had multiple switches so if you had 10 uh, five cameras connected on the very far end of the building and then you had a switch in the middle of the building that had another five cameras those two switches are connected via cable and then the and then you had a switch near the MVR you can daisy chain all those switches together into a single port and it will it will recognize all those cameras. Basically, it can cut back on the amount of cables you have to run, which cuts back on the amount of time you spend in a job. So I really hope that this information, you guys will kind of take this and use this in the field. I do wanted to show you one other thing though. Let's say I wanted to show you how easy it is to configure these cameras via the tool. Let's say if you do have some cameras and you wanted to connect them this way, but they've already been used and they already maybe have a different IP address on them. All you need to do is download the Alibi Vigilant Toolbox, connect those cameras to a switch, connect your computer to a switch. That's what I did here. So that way these cameras will show up on this uh, Vigilant Toolbox. The key here is to know your password, right? As long as you know your password, we can make things happen with this tool. These cameras still have the default password of 123456. That's super easy. But well, let's say I want to default these cameras. So instead of logging into each camera and defaulting them individually, I can I can do that all from the tool right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the cameras. I'm going to hit log in. If you change the password from 123456 to a different password, make sure to update that here. So um, this is 123456. I'm going to leave that alone. 
Matter of fact, I can just retype it just for the video. I'm gonna hit okay here. And on the right hand side here, you see where it says login succeeded. That's good news. All right, so once login is succeeded, we wanna to go to the maintenance tab on the left. And it still kind of has that operation status here. All we need to do is hit on restore right here and restore factory defaults. Notice that all these cameras are still selected. It's gonna give you a message there like, hey, restoring factory defaults in case network disconnection. Basically, it's gonna take the camera and put it back into out of box experience. And that's exactly what we want if we're gonna be connecting those, you know, via a switch and all that good stuff. So we'll hit yes here. The cameras are gonna disappear. Don't freak out. They're just rebooting. And once they come back up, they will be back on the default IP address and the default password. So I'm gonna go device config here and uh, we'll give it a couple seconds to reboot those cameras. All right, so if I hit refresh here, it, the cameras came right back up. And as you notice, they do have the default address, 192.168.1.13. That's exactly what we're looking for. So, I mean, once these cameras are in this state, you can go ahead and go through that four step process that I did earlier in this video. Connect the cameras to the switch, they already connected. Configure the port on the NVR. Connect the switch to the NVR on that same port. And then just do the um, configuration on the camera menu, adding those cameras to each channel. You're done, it's over. So really, even if you have to reset these cameras and go through the whole process, I mean, we're talking about for three or four cameras, like a 10 minute process. Obviously, if you're gonna have uh, adding 16 cameras or something like that, then maybe it's gonna take a little bit more time to go to each channel and just hit select the camera, hit okay. But even then, that is a very simple process. I mean, I'd take that any day in over using this little mouse and trying to type the IP address on the recorder. We all know how that goes. So in the end, if you guys have any questions on how to set up this situation, please reach out to our tech support team that will be more than happy to assist you with any questions you have. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button along with the notification bell in order to get notified when new videos are available.